Hey guys, in today's video we're going to be talking about a really important topic for structural engineers and civil engineers, and that is reinforced concrete design. So reinforced concrete is one of the most commonly used materials in construction, and in today's lesson we're going to be talking about three things. I'm going to give you a quick introduction into the concept of reinforced concrete design, I'm then going to show you some software that we can use for automating the design of reinforced concrete sections in accordance with the Eurocode 2 um, criteria. So I'm going to be explaining about designing concrete and showing you this free software you can use. And then finally, I'm going to do a deep dive on the theory, explaining the first principles and also how to do some of the hand calculations. So this lesson will be really useful if you're a structural engineer, wanting to design reinforced concrete and you're looking for a refresher or also if you are a student and you're looking for help on one of your assignments I'm going to show you some software that can help to cross-check your answers. So without further ado what is reinforced concrete? So reinforced concrete is as I was saying one of the most commonly used materials in construction um, it is one of the oldest materials as well it goes back thousands of years and um, in today's world, what we use it for quite often is we use it for lots of buildings, bridges, all these infrastructure projects use lots and lots of concrete. And the way we use it today is we typically add reinforcement to it. So concrete itself is not very strong in tension. It's very good in compression when we push it and crush it, but um, not very good when we actually pull on it and put tension into it. It's quite weak. Uh, this is really key because when you're bending beams, the bottom of the beam will go into tension and the top will go into compression. So it's really important we have some ten tensile resistance in the concrete. So for this reason, we add we typically add reinforcement to it these days to give it some tensile strength and also to reduce any cracking. So we can get cracking in concrete when it's curing and adding reinforcement to it can help to reduce the amount of cracking. So these, for these two reasons, we typically add steel to our concrete today. And we then use codes like Eurocodes, which I'm going to talk to you today about in Europe and on projects around the world, um, to design the steel and the concrete and ensure that the concrete is strong enough. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you some software we can use, which is free and open source for designing um, reinforced concrete. So if you go to www.calcforge.com, I'll put the link in the description of the video, um, and go to the reinforced concrete calculator, here we can actually design reinforced concrete automatically. So what you'll see on the left is a kind of results preview of what you're designing, what you've input as your parameters. And you'll see three different things here. You'll see the overall result. Is it passing or failing for the certain conditions like the loading you've put on it, the bending and the stress? Um, the ULS, which is ultimate limit state. So this is uh, the overall strength, like the stability, the structural strength of this concrete. Is it passing or failing? So it's 71% utilized meaning that it's underutilized, 100% would be right on the limit before it fails. And then SLS, serviceability limit state, which is more to do with the in operation, like service of it, which is more to do with deflection. And uh, is this is this uh, beam sort of like deflecting too much or moving too much for it to be safely used? So you'll see here that it's actually SLS, which could also be related to cracking as well. So serviceability limit state is not is not good here and therefore it's failing. What you can do is you can basically use the um, you use interface on the right. Uh, oh, but, but first, uh, before I show you that, basically it's this code's open source and you can see a link here to the GitHub where this code is actually stored. So you can go and check out this project and see the code, uh, the underlying code behind this application yourself. And then here on the right, I have this user interface where I can input different parameters. So I can input my concrete strength, section width and depth. So the width of this concrete section, the depth of it. I can adjust the applied loading. So I can change the bending moment, the axial force being applied to this and the reinforcement. So bottom reinforcement, if we're putting this into bending, the bottom reinforcement will be going into tension whereas the top will be going into compression. So here the bottom reinforcement, we can set this 
um, to give us some more like tensile resistance really. And if I click advanced settings, I can actually also add shear force here and uh, adjust the top reinforcement. So I can add more top reinforcement if I want to um, and adjusting the bar diameter and the cover, which is the distance from the surface or the edge of the concrete to the bar itself. Um, and then I can also change the reinforcement concrete, uh, the reinforcement properties, so the steel strength and the cover to the edges as well, so this edge distance. But let's say, right, I want to see if I can get this uh, sort of within the limit. So I can actually do something like, you know, simply reducing the bending, although this is an SLS uh, failure, so it's a bit... Uh, ULS you'll see will drop like ultimate limit state. Uh, we could also consider adding more bars so I can go for bottom reinforcement from three I can go to four and see the effects on this so again it reduces it more. But anyway we're within the limit now let me see if I make this 30 again let's see if we're still good yeah so we're still within the SLS limit now by adding four bars here. But you can play around with it, right? You could try changing the depth, or you could try changing some of the, um, yeah, the, the depth of the overall section or the cover. Maybe you could try changing this, and you can see the effects on the result summary. I can also then click this MN plot, which is quite an interesting one. So this is basically um, the resistance envelope for this concrete section. So every point you see along here is basically a... Yeah, is, is the envelope of the resistance of the concrete. So if you imagine you're applying some bending to this concrete beam, and then you're also applying a compressive force, so you're also going to be compressing, pushing it on either end, um, you see that if you're bending it and compressing it at the same time, it's going to actually cause potentially some sort of worse effect. So you'll see what tends to happen with concrete is that over a certain point, uh, the more compressive force that you add, the worse the bending moment resistance will be. So this is because you are actually going to be like sort of buckling almost this um, this beam. So that's why you get this sort of envelope effect where the, the strength sort of tapers off as you get more and more axial force. Um, and generally, you know, the most optimized section will be when you have this load point, which is your combination of your applied bending and axial uh, on the sort of like longest part of this. So your section sort of optimized for the axial force that you're applying. But yeah, you need to consider this envelope when you're looking at this calculation. Um, and so you'll see, you know, I can also adjust sort of this. Um, so let's say I reduce the um, axial force that's being applied, you'll see that my point now drops further down and I can actually get more bending from this section as a result of that. So I can add more to 50, so maybe 50 is just outside, but maybe if I make it like 35, then you'll see I'm able to get more, uh, more than I could before. If I click full calculation, I'll see here a bit more detail. So this is going to give me a bit more of a breakdown. So the MN utilization, it tells me this. It tells me in terms of the shear analysis, what shear links I'll need. So when the, what we were looking at there was bending, but you also have shear forces. And so you'll have these shear links that you see. So the shear links basically go around the outside. Each one of these sort of um, these bars that sort of run around the perimeter of the section these are your shear links and they help to sort of keep everything tight and together when you're applying shear forces. And you see here the sort of separation of them. So this calculation gives you the spacing of these. So 225 millimeter spacing maximum and 10 millimeter bar shear links. Um, it also tells us serviceability limit state. So it tells us our neutral axis depth. We'll talk about this in the theory se section. It also tells us the crack. So SLS here is related to cracking and we're just about within our cracking limit. So uh, 0.3, we're, we're within our limit there. So this is a very quick um, assessment uh, in terms of showing us what our you know reinforcement spacing needs to be and what our reinforcement area needs to be as well. Um, but let's dive into the theory section to explain a bit more about what these results really mean. So I'm going to explain this topic with the help of examples and pictures so it'll be easy to understand. Now here we consider a simply supported beam. 
then for this example, there'll be some load acting on this beam. It will be a universally, uniformly distributed load acting on this pin. So due to the load acting on this beam, this beam will try and bend, as we see here. It will bend like this, and the top of the beam, it will be compressed. It will show compression, while at the bottom of the beam, it will be in tension. So the length of the beam at the bottom will be extended, while at the top, it will contract. So at the top of the beam, we'll see some compressive stresses, but at the bottom of the beam, we'll see tensile stresses. So this is the general behavior of the beam under the uniformly distributed load. So now, if we look at how the neutral axis can be defined, the compression and tension zone in a beam cross-section can be defined. So if I cut this beam in the middle, it will. Uh, so here, I will see the cross-section of the beam. So due to the load on the beam the top at the top there will be some mid portion of the beam here um, where there will be no stresses acting on the beam this is known as the neutral axis so here if I wanted to find the neutral axis first of all it's this X or the position at the point where there are no stresses no stresses means no compression and no tension there are no stresses so here due to the load um, at the, uh, the top portion of the beam, it will be compressed. This portion of the beam is in compression, totally compression. So if I draw the stresses, it will look like this. Um, this part has been compressed, and the compressive stresses will be maximum at the top of the beam, and it will decrease with the depth of the beam. It will decrease with the depth of the beam, and at the neutral axis, um, the neutral axis at this point, the stresses, the compressive stresses will be equal to zero or that the surface will be equal to zero. Now, after the neutral axis, the tensile stresses will increase. So it will look like this. So here, the whole portion of the beam is in tension. This, at uh, the bottom, this portion of the beam below the neutral axis will be in tension. So here, this part is in tension. And we will have to install spaces. So the maximum tensile, the maximum tensile, um, stresses will be at the bottom of the beam, at the extreme bottom of the beam. We'll have extreme higher tension stresses. So here we have the maximum overall tension. And then on the other end, we have the maximum overall compression. Um, and these both vary with the depth. So the beam tensile stresses decrease and at the neutral axis point, uh, what, uh, this neutral axis point, the tension in the, uh, the of the compressive stresses is zero. So this is the general behavior of beams, um, and the neutral axis can be found using this approach. So I hope you guys generally followed what's going on here in terms of calculating the neutral axis location for the simply supported beam when there's the universally distributed load acting on the beam. Um, and yeah, this can vary depending on if you have reinforcement added as well. So currently we're just looking at a plainly, um, plain concrete beam, but this can vary with reinforcement as well.